Well, welcome back, everybody, especially to our Lynx players, family, and friends. Dennis Darville with you, along with Boo Arnold. I'm coming to you from Georgia. Boo's coming to, to us from San Antonio, Texas. And, and uh, just before we started this recording, a foursome came through behind me on the 18th. And as I watched them approach the green, one, one gentleman hit it in the bunker to his left. Another gentleman flew it right at the flag, went over the green. Neither one of them got it up and down. The other two didn't make par either. So, you know, perfect timing because golf like life has lots of challenges. We face lots of adversities, very real things. And uh, so I've asked Boo to give us some thought. Thanks, Boo, for joining us. And uh, look, just tell us what's on your mind, what's on your heart. What, what have you learned in your own life from Scripture about facing and overcoming or persevering? through adversities. Uh, that's great. Great timing for this topic. We just finished uh, Romans chapter eight in our links group, and it applies to facing adversity. Uh, the, Paul's answer in Romans chapter eight is the spirit within, right? The Holy Spirit in him, helping him overcome his tendency toward legalism. Uh, he says that that's how we overcome sin is not by our own strength, but the strength of the Holy Spirit in us. And then toward the end of chapter eight, he takes sort of, in my opinion, a left turn, but he starts talking about the suffering that he faces and how the spirit helps him in the midst of the adversity that, that he personally is dealing with uh, as he continues to, to minister. Uh, so real quick, I just wanted to, th three general categories of adversity um, that I think apply to us personally. And then I'd like to use Paul's strategy for dealing with adversity to help us. The first is we all face life's challenges, just basic challenges, financial, uh, marital, uh, family. These are things we deal with every day, right? But uh, we have to overcome. We have to push on and, and we have to look for solutions when we face day-to-day -day problems. Second is uh, more, more serious is surviving permanent loss. And that's the loss of a loved one. Uh, it could be a physical ailment. Sometimes things happen, you know, to us physically or medically, and, and we're not going to recover. You know, this is an ailment that will carry through to the end of our lives. So serious loss when we lose somebody we love or our bodies are breaking down, another great challenge, and, and that's serious adversity. And then finally, the most threatening of all is facing death itself. <laughs> death is approaching death. That's serious adversity. I mean, that's the end, right? And so is there anything that we can draw upon from the scripture uh, as we all move toward death, because it's a guarantee that all of us will face death and we, we want to do that well. So three general types of adversity that we face. In Romans chapter eight, Paul does five things, and I'm moving through these really quickly, that help him as he faces diversity. The first thing is he remembers always that he's in the realm of the spirit, right? Uh, as Christians, we have one foot in the material world, but one foot in the spiritual world, we have the Holy Spirit in us. So this, these battles are spiritual. They're not just material. The, the, the material man, the carnal man, uses his own strength to kind of fight and survive life, right? It's a Darwinian strategy, but that's not, that's not who we are. We have supernatural power from the spirit within us. So Paul does these things as he relates to the spirit within him and works to face the adversity that he deals with. The first is that he compares this life to the next. He realizes that we live in a fallen world, that there's the promise of things to come, the restoration of all things, and that this world is not where we're meant to be we have hope in the next slide. Secondly, he relies on the Holy Spirit for strength, the great promise, right? The Holy Spirit in us is added supernatural strength as we deal with adversity in our own lives. And the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. So the Holy Spirit in us is praying on our behalf, even when we don't know what to pray. I mean, that's miraculous, right? We have real, a real and serious uh, friend in the Holy Spirit as he aids us as we move through this life. Paul says he groans. He groans, the material world groans, that it's fallen, that it's looking toward, again, the restoration of, uh, restoration of all things. And finally, Paul rests in God's love that uh, will always be there. There's nothing that can separate him from God's great love, right? Death, nor life, height, nor depth, any of these things uh, can separate Paul from, from God's love. So these are the things that he meditates on as he lives in the spiritual realm, but deals with the material. So. I gave you three broad categories for the adversity that we face, general challenges, permanent loss, and then finally death. And just three quick illustrations of people that I think have dealt with these categories of adversity well. The first is I just saw a movie with George Foreman in it. Uh, George Foreman had a 
powerful conversion experience in a locker room. God called him to preach the gospel. He went into ministry only later to define, uh, uh, to uh, discover that his accountant had lost all his money. So at the age of uh, early 40s, at 44, George Foreman fights his way back in boxing with God's help, and he wins the heavyweight championship of the world. Oldest man ever to do that. And as he wins that uh, victory, he kneels down in his corner in the boxing ring and gives glory, and gives glory to God. So a great example of somebody just overcoming general adversity in life that we all face. He fought back, looked to God for help, and God gave the glory. God, he gave God the glory when he overcame. Second, permanent loss. Someone that's very inspirational to me, Joni Erickson Tata, dove into a shallow lake in her early 20s, lost the use of her body for her entire life. If you get a chance, you might listen to some of her sermons or read her books, but she's an amazing woman. She's now in her late 60s, I would guess, and I heard her say the other day, Finally, she's at a point where she thanks God for what has happened to her. Unbelievable. That's miraculous. And why is that? Because God has used her to impact the lives of so many people. So surviving permanent loss, I, you know, Joni Erickson taught, I think, is a great example of someone that moved forward after that. And then finally, facing death. One story that I never liked in Scripture was when John the Baptist sent word to Jesus, hey, man, I'm here in prison, and Herod's about to cut my head off. What? What have you got to say to me? Uh, and, and, and what does Jesus do? It's baffling, to, not baffling, but it's a little bit disturbing. Jesus said, you go tell John that we're casting out demons and healing the sick. What he's saying is the Messiah has come and there is hope. But for John, he would go on to lose his life in that prison. Uh, but he faced death with this great realization that Jesus was Messiah and that hope was now on the earth and things were moving forward to again the restoration of all things so those are just quick uh kind of illustrations of people who have overcome kind of these these challenges that we face and uh i think it's encur encouraging to me when i when i hear their stories oh boo that, that was just fabulous I, i'll tell you what I'm, I'm gonna go talk to my senior pastor right now and get him to invite you to come preach for us that was just outstanding uh and so you're right uh it's so helpful what I, what i think i like most is the distinction between those that are in Christ over against those who are not following Christ. And for those of us who are in Christ, we have access to supernatural powers, uh, in particular, how you delineated that out of Romans 8. So, brother, thanks for your time this morning. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, tell your precious bride, appreciate her loaning you out to us for a few minutes. And uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, good seeing you, Dennis. Uh, God bless to our Lynx family. God bless. We'll see you next Friday.